Hey guys, World Leader here. Today we're going to be starting off on our fourth episode of the Let's Play. Now, I haven't really done anything but just uh, ran regen here and there. Um, I did pick up a few epics, but um, they aren't leveled as you can see. The only thing I have leveled are my tier 4 rares. I am currently still in tier 4 as you can see. Oh, by the way, a quick tip, if you click on anyone's mount, including your own, it'll always tell you what tier they are currently in. So let's go ahead and check this out. Right now we are in Ashvale. Ashvale. And our team is Shramps and Borland mainly right now as our fans. So let's go ahead and go through this first flag. Roy's path, find and defeat Roy. I'm gonna enter. We're gonna put me in the back just so we can uh, make sure that Borland's in the middle for now. Shramps up front, of course, because he is the tankiest. Let's go ahead and go. Okay. Turn off auto. So, this is a new familiar. Uggs. Deals damage to closest enemy and closest enemy. So, for this flag, the safest bet would be to have your Borland in back or your DPS fam in back. Let's see if I can auto this. Sweet. We'll get right back to it. Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka. Jugga Wugga, Uga Chaka. Juga Wugga, Uga Chaka! <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and click on him real quick. He seems to be doing a lot of damage to the back, so let's check this out. Okay, so deals damage to closest, deals damage to target. So pretty much no matter where we put. Oh, uh, Borland, it won't really matter against his fam, but he's still safest in the back since there is no attack furthest in this so far. So he also has a drain to SP, which means he heals as he hits. But yeah, he shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and auto him. He's only doing as much damage as he's doing because he is a mini boss fam. All right, here's the loot recap. We got a Trixie schematic. Not that great of a fam, in my opinion. Uh, not for what we're going to be going for on this account, at least. Okay, there's our rewards. We now have the second flag unlocked. Terrace Field, find and defeat the Terra Lord. Again, we're gonna want Borland in back for now. Any new fams? So far, no. <laughs> okay. Attack closest and drain closest. So again, for this uh, first few flags, Borland is safest in the back no matter what. So we're going to always have our tank up front and then us in the middle and then Borland in back for these first three flags and the first dungeon of tier four, of course. Pretty easy to auto. Honestly, this these first few flags are uh, pretty easy. I'm already decked out in all tier four gear. I really doubt I'll need any other pieces. Um, I think these uh, three unleveled epics and three maxed out rares will be more than enough. Rocky Steeps, clear the dungeon of all enemies. Cool, we'll be getting some more rune fragments. We need some more of those, honestly. Um, again, Borland should be safest in back. Let's go ahead and auto on through this. I'm pretty sure there's no new fams. There's usually only three per area. Okay, again, pretty easy dungeon. Let's go ahead and go on to the first dungeon of this area. That flag was pretty easy. So we are now in Rexy's Plateau. This is where you will be picking up Rexy. 
Okay, the reward, some gems, and a average potion. Just gonna auto on through this until we get to Rexy. Oh dear, I've never had my meal approach me before. Come a little closer, my tasty friend. <laughs> He's so fat. Dead. <laughs> okay. Honestly, this area is pretty easy. Um, well, then again, I do have carries. But I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end of this area. And we'll be back at the recap scene. All right, here's a loot recap. We didn't really get much. Again, some more commons. Let's go ahead and go to town. Awesome, 50 gems, it's nice. Now we went ahead and unlocked the first flag of the new area. Again, when I like to start these, I like to put Borland in the middle. Uh, I just feel like it's safe. I know I sound like a broken record saying this a lot, but I just wanted to get through y'all's heads that you. this is pretty much the safest way you can have your team having a tank up front, another tank or bait in the back. Typically, a bait would be more uh, um, it'd be a lot better if you had a bait, but at this point in the game, baits aren't really a thing. And uh, your DPS slash healer in the middle. So let's go ahead and check this out. I'm going to turn off auto. There's a new familiar here. Okay. Oh, there's two new familiars. So we have Sammy, closest and furthest. So we now have a furthest. They will be attacking the furthest, which means I will be safest in the back regardless. That is a one SP for sure. And patches, target, and closest. So this area might be a little harder because they hit closest, furthest, and target, which would be the middle uh, since he is the weakest. This is going to be a lot harder of an area. Let's see if we can go ahead and auto on through this. As you can see, Borland is taking a few hits, but it doesn't seem like it should be too much of a problem in the early on flags. Hopefully, I don't need to level anything up, but if I do, I will. Uh, that way, I can get some more total stats and push on through. So far, it's looking so good. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward until the end of this area. Enjoy. All right, we're at the loot recap. We got some XP, some gems, and just a few more commons again. That was a pretty easy dungeon. Again, uh, you might have to have a maxed out fam or uh, I guess a few stables in your fam. That way you could take some hits or you have to have uh, more TS, like kind of how I have uh, some leveled up rares. Again, uh, you might not need the levels on the rares, but I just put them because it helped me out in uh, Trials Gauntlet whenever I was pushing on regen. But yeah, so far I only have three max rares and three unleveled epics for the amount of stats they give. I feel like it's pretty good to save my common rare and epic material for now. So we have a new fam. Okay. His name is Cerebrum. He deals closest and closest. That's pretty cool. So we're going to keep it like this just in case some of the other fams come into play from the last flag. But if they don't, I will put Borland in back. Let's go ahead and check the next set of fams to see if maybe that was just a one-time thing for this dungeon. And yes, it is. I'm going to go ahead and put Borland in back and auto on through. Be right back at the recap scene. Mia, cool looking gear you got there. Where'd you get it? Not gonna tell me, eh? After I give you the smackdown, you'll have to tell me. Mia! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love reading those for some reason. So they are hitting pretty hard, but it's fine because it is closest. Nice. All right, so again, a bunch of commons, some XP. So let's go to town. Collect. Nice, another flag. This is the Rotten Passage. Clear the dungeon of all enemies. We're going to get some more rune fragments. Pretty cool that we're getting some more rune fragments. More runes is always better. Let's go ahead and enter on through. 
So, if we're gonna have them all, I still think Vorland save us in the back. No, wait, no. It would be in the middle, because there was an attack for this with the spider. And there is an attack target, which is the rat. So, if you have to target anyone, I recommend you target the rat. Let me see if I can get the rat's name again. It's this guy right here. Oh, patches. So, there's a full team of patches here. So, this is gonna be a little difficult. Let's go ahead and see if we can auto it. Alright, we were able to kill them before they got too much SP to target the middle. Here's Sammy. Okay, if you're playing effectively like you were having problems here, you would just target the patches in the back and keep healing. If you were having issues on this part of the area. So we're going to target him and then we can auto it. So again, if you are having problems in this flag, or any of this area, you will want to just target all patches. So there is a patches in this group. There is a full team of patches, so there's no point. Let's try to auto on through. All right, sweet. Might be another full team of patches. Oh man. So they are starting to target Borlin a lot, but the good thing is we have plenty of heals in this team. We should be able to self-sustain. Let's keep it going. Here's a Sammy. Here's a full team of them all. Now there's a lot of attack closes at the beginning, so uh, Shramps does take quite the beating. Just keep healing them up. SP Shrine for the win. Some more gold. Alright, again. Uh, well, I really couldn't show you because it was a pretty easy dungeon, but uh, just target the patches again. He will be the hardest uh, familiar in this area. Here's the loot recap. Got two gems to add to it. Total nice. Okay, we got the rune fragments. We are breezing on by. Now we are at Wardy's Corridor. Gonna get some gems and another revive potion. Again, carries will do everything, so just gonna go ahead and start this up. I will see you guys at the boss or at the end of the dungeon. Let's see. Ribbit. Wanna hear a joke? Why did the why didn't the bit here cross my sewers? Because I ate a Alright, we went ahead and got to the end. We got a Pacho schematic. Uh, never seen that familiar before. And we got a Epic Ring. Nice. Just in case we need, might need more than these, but I really doubt we will. Let's go ahead and go back to town. Okay, 50 gems. That's nice. 120. Nice. Okay, we are on the third set of flags. This is looking good. Golem Depths. Clear the dungeon of all the Golem infestation. So whenever it says clear of all the like specific fam names, it means that all the fams are gonna be the same. So I'm gonna keep the team like this, move on forward. Okay, here is a new familiar. This must be Gollum. He attacked pretty fast, yeah. He has a lot of speed if he attacked before anything, or before um, my turn passed. So he deals damage to closest and target, but it's a two SP. But the thing about him being a 2SP is he still has a lot of speed, so he might be able to accumulate that a lot faster. Especially since he does not have a 1SP to take some of the SP away from this attack. He will be using this attack if he's not using closest. So you best believe if you see 2SP under him, he will be targeting your DPS slash healer. So it does not matter where we put Borland right now as long as it's not the front. So we're going to go ahead and auto on through. Well, he'd still be in the back. The back is still the safest because attack closest if they kill shrimps i'll be next and then borlin uh until they get their sp like this guy up front has a lot of sp gonna make sure he dies and if you start having problems and you really want to min max this area you will want to target whoever has more sp gain there you go we're gonna try to go ahead and auto on through this we'll see you either when we <laughs> don't make it through this or at the end of the dungeon enjoy See what I mean? It's starting to get hard. So let's go ahead and do a minor revive potion. 
Let's go ahead and manual this. We could probably make it to the end of the dungeon. But it does not seem like we will be able to auto this uh, past this flag. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Worst case scenario, we'll try to get some more rares to replace our uh, epics for now. I will try to keep my main hand as the epic because we will have uh, better move options. Let's go ahead and put Shramps in the middle so he can get some health while I take the damage. Try to damage all. Okay. Oof, he is now dead. So let's see if we can do this with just us. I'm really starting to doubt we can get on through this. Alright, that didn't seem to work. So what we are going to do is we are going to level up some of our gear. So we are going to go ahead and upgrade one of these pieces. Let's do the offhand. So this is taking 2 and 25. We have 184, which is good. We've been saving a lot. It looks like we're doing pretty good here. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade it. Yes. I will try to upgrade it again. Yes. Now this is 28, 11, 28 versus 35, 5. So that seems like a good amount of stats. Let's try to only upgrade it twice and see how we do. We don't want to waste too many of our materials. Let's go to quest, golem depth, enter. And again, he is safest in the back. So we're gonna put it in the back and we'll put me second. Let's try this out. I'm gonna go ahead and take over and heal. It seems like we're going to have to manual this. We might even have to upgrade our gear a little more. Keep on healing, keep damaging. Shramps is getting low, switch him to the middle. Heal, rage, damage first three, damage, heal, damage, heal. Let's go ahead and swap them out. Damage, damage, heal. Okay. Now we are getting fairly weak, so we have to be careful. All right. Heal, damage all, damage, Heal, damage all, heal, damage, damage. Okay, now we're getting pretty weak. I'm gonna go ahead and give him a potion. I have a lot of average in comparison to my minor and my major, so I will be using my average. Nice. Let's keep these guys a little low. Okay. As long as they're not like really in the red, we can hold back off on healing. Save as much potions as possible. Okay, heal. Now he's getting weak, what is this? Spread heal teammates, I'm gonna do that. That way I can catch back up a little bit. All right. Oof, getting pretty weak there. We gotta be careful. Attack all. And we have lost our Borland for the game. Let's see if we can do this. It's getting very risky now. Does not seem like we can get through this. Let's keep trying. Cool. Now it says you have completed this dungeon. You can leave at any point without penalty. I'm going to go ahead and continue just to pick up the loot. Nice. We ended up getting a gem from continuing that. Let's go to town. Now it is looking like it's getting a lot harder with that familiar. I believe his name was Gollum. So here it's going to say, find and defeat Megazorg. We might have a lot of Gollums. I'm not sure if it's gonna be all Zorgs or Gollums, but that was still pretty hard. Let's go ahead and upgrade our gear a little more. Now, instead of maxing this one out, you know what? We might actually max this one out. There's two things you can do. 
You can either max this one out, it'll cost 6 epic material and 75 rare material, which are the ones that are the problem ones, the problematic ones. The common ain't so much, but still 750 is a lot, especially when you're starting. So you can either max one piece out or you can make it easier on yourself and level 3 epics, like I, like I have here 3, by 1 each, which will cost you only 2 each, 25 each, and 250 each. I am kind of trying to only max out one piece. I might have to max out two anyways, so I'm just gonna do this one for now. And I guess I'll level up my main hand since I have enough epic material and rare material and all that. I'll go ahead and do that. Here you can actually choose what stats you want. Um, I am going to keep it on damage. Damage is a lot better for right now. Oh, whoops, sorry. That's reforge, where's upgrade? There it is, okay. Let's go ahead and keep upgrading. And I really don't wanna to have to deal with uh, doing those flags over and over again. So I'm just gonna max out two epics. Again, it is better if you can get a bunch of maxed rares. Like if I didn't have these two epics and I had a bunch of rares there, I would have just maxed the rares and probably been able to get through this dungeon pretty easily. But I didn't um, save some rares and that's my fault. I should have saved some just in case this happened. But just in case uh, you did scrap things and do exactly what I did, uh, just know that you are still in the clear. It's a good thing at the early point of the game to save one of everything in rare and have maybe like three or four epics at the beginning if you get them. That way you can go ahead and see exactly how much you'll need to proceed on through. Right now we have two maxed epics, one unmaxed epic, and three um, maxed rares. I can reforge and I think it's gonna show me that yes, it's going to show that you could reforge the item. Um, I don't wanna do this, it will give me health, but I don't wanna do this, so yeah. That's how you reforge epics, legendaries I believe, not all epics, not all legendaries, I believe, but some epics, some legendaries, sets, and I think mythics and ancients can be changed um, from health to damage or from damage to speed and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and try to do Zork's Cavern, defeat Megazorg. Now, I'm going to keep it like this because it was safest for the Golem lineup. Let's see if Golem's still here. See, Golem is still here, so I'm glad we did that. Okay, so here we have Stace, Stas, Stas, I don't know, this dude. He deals closest, furthest. Okay, so the furthest is going to make us put Borland in the middle and target 2 SP. And he has a great amount of speed and damage, so we have to be careful with him. He doesn't have as much speed as Gollum here, but still. So he will be safest in the middle, by him I mean Borland, and I will be best in the back with the Shramps up front. Let's see if we can auto this now that we have six levels in our gear. Now, just before we lose Borlin, I'm going to give him an average healing potion. Again, try to use your healing potions before your revives because your revives are very, very good and they're best used in scenarios that are really, really hard that you find yourself stuck on. Okay, so since Shramps is weak, we're gonna swap him out to the back. Continue autoing. Oh, a ball. Oh boy. Oh boy, a ball. I have just met you and I love you. You won't throw the ball? I have just met you and now I'll eat you. <laughs> Honestly, I've always thought he had such a cool little design to him. Whoa, he hit pretty hard. Let's go ahead and click on him real quick. Closest, closest, closest. So you're gonna want Borland in back if uh, you're only fighting this guy. Like for just for this area, I will be putting Borland in back. But as the other part of the um, dungeon, you will want him in the middle. Let's see if we could take him out. He's uh, pretty beefy. Let's go ahead and heal me. And we'll keep Shramps as he is for now. This is starting to look very difficult. Let's go ahead and heal Shramps. Okay. What does this do? All enemies, 229, three, okay. This is the best bet. I will be using that. Let's keep healing, keep healing. We'll use my character to focus on damage since I do a lot. We'll use Borland to heal. Okay, let's go ahead and put me up front now. Now I will be dropping health a whole lot faster than Shramps was. 
but we should be able to get through this. Now, although Borlin is a healer slash DPS, I'm going to put him in front since he has more health. And now that he's that low, put Shramps. Okay. Now we're going to put me. Now we're going to put Borlin. Now we're going to put Shramps. Oh, he evaded. That might be the reason I lose. Okay, let's check this out. It's a very close match here. And we got it. All right. Let's go ahead and continue on through. Awesome. This is a loot recap. Again, nothing. <laughs> Just some commons. Or sorry, some rares. No, wait. Yeah, commons. Commons and XP. Awesome. We were able to get through that flag. That wasn't even the last one for this area. So we might be struggling here. Clear the dungeon of all enemies it's going to give us some rune fragments this is starting to seem like a little bit of a problem but let's go ahead and see if we can do this so i think borland would save us in middle because there was attack for this here i believe i'd have to check again so let's check out him i remember he was attack closest but here we have all three fams of the area we have a furthest yeah so because of him we have to have borland in the middle there is a two sp target for this guy and a two sp target for this guy as well man zorg looks super cool this area looks really cool let's try to auto on through since we don't have a mega version of any familiar uh this should be easy again i think the hardest flag uh of this whole area would be the last flag we just did which is the eighth flag of tier four it's the mini boss fams that have boosted stats that tend to give you the problem. You will more than likely have to manual as I had to do. The only reason why this one is a lot easier is again, because there is no mini boss fams. I should be able to auto on through this through most of the dungeon. All right. Now I'm getting low. I'm gonna go ahead and heal myself. Now this is starting to look a little bad. Let's go ahead and try to take over. Again, it's not as bad as the last one. Let's see if there's any more fams. There are two sets of fams for sure. So let's start taking over. We're gonna heal. We are going to damage these guys because these guys are the harder ones. Let's go ahead and heal a little bit more. Take him out. Have I healed everyone here? I have not. I will heal Borlin. He's getting pretty weak. So let's spread heal. Damage closest, damage closest. Target him to get rid of him. Heal, heal. Okay, let's try to do as little damage as possible so we can get some more heals off. There you go. All right, let's check this out. Any more fams up here? Does not seem like it. That might be the last fam below. Let's see if we can go ahead and get through this guy. Let's check this out. Hopefully he is the last set of fams here. Heal. Let's do what is this? Damage all. Let's do damage all. Nice. Looking really good. Kill him. Heal. Kill him. Let's target him to do more damage. Heal just in case. All right, we cleared the area. Not bad. Town. So now that we did that, we are now. <laughs> not officially, but we pretty much are in tier five, since I will be able to auto this dungeon. This is going to be Kolvog's Pit. Find and defeat Kolvog. Kolvog is pretty cool. I think she's a really cool looking fam. So uh, we are going to be getting some more gems and a rare or average item find scroll. Let's go ahead and go ahead and auto on through this. I will see you at the end of this dungeon. Enjoy. Hmm, what might we have here? A new little hero? You're an adorable one. Come closer, my dear. I want to get a good look at you. <laughs> oh, 
All right, here's a loot recap. Bunch of trashy commons and some XPs. Let's go ahead and go to town. Awesome, we got 50 more gems and an item find scroll. Let's go ahead and collect that. And we are now done with Asheville. Completed, let's go. New adventures await you in Aramor. Sweet. Aramor, Aramor? Whatever it is, we are now in tier five. That's great. That's pretty sweet. We are now in tier five, but that also means that we have a new raid and we have also unlocked, as you can see here, tier five heroic. That's great. Now expedition, your expedition will now give you the current tier stuff. So if I hit play here and I go there, I will see here that I will get tier five and you're now able to get set pieces, which is great. So I'll show you that. I really strongly, strongly advise that you guys avoid sets. I know sets are awesome and they make the game so much more fun, but if you try to level up sets, sets will cost more um, materials to level up and it'll take you a lot longer to level them up to get the same stats. And the sets at the beginning of the game, although they are cool, they are nowhere near as good as the current tier sets. So you don't wanna be leveling up these sets. I know they're cool, but if I were you, I would just collect them for the cosmetics for now. That's what I like to do. Try to um, push this as much as possible. Like here we have tier five, as you can see tier five gear is now the gear that drops. It's pretty cool, there's some nice ones. Like there's this Calamity main hand that I think looks really cool. You have a bunch of this, this uh, body is pretty cool. It has a bunch of rainbow effects. This is a pretty cool little set. It's awesome, it's not a set, but it is a set um, of cosmetics, which is what I like about these. You also get schematics. Uh, don't recommend making any of these for now. They are a lot harder to make. But yeah, you will now be able to get current tier gear from here. You can start off as high as you can or as low as you can. You will still have the same chance to get the same gear. Again, the only thing that it will affect for Expedition will be the points you get and the points will be affecting your rewards based on your rank and your points totally earned. Trials as well. Well, I can't really show you with three. Let me, let me try that. Actually, wait, I don't even need to be through this. Go down here. As you can see, you now have tier five. You can now do tier five and get tier five gear if you're strong enough to push it, which I'm pretty sure you are. It just has to be the lowest variant. Let's go ahead and see, whoops, sorry. Let's go ahead and click on this real quick. Click the weakest one, go to 100. Let's go ahead and see exactly what it drops. So yes, there is a, there's two sets here, that's nice. There is Dragon's Breath for the Trugdoor's Call. Trugdoor's Call is a chance for skills to target twice or to trigger twice, sorry. 7% chance for projectiles to ricochet to a nearby enemy. Again, these aren't that great. This one seems pretty good, which is the unity setup, which is gain the unity skill, which is spread heal teammates. It's not that great. It could be great if um, it didn't involve having to be both neck and ring, but unfortunately it's not that useful. You cannot use neck or rings for cosmetics, so the only cosmetics you'd be trying to get here would be these first three. And it's cool because uh, whenever you scrap set pieces, you do get more materials from them. Let's go ahead and see what was in the Netherworld drops. Let's go tier five. There are no, no sets here, surprisingly. So there are still no sets in the world boss for this one. Is there any for Orlag? Let's go ahead and check that out. I don't think there is. So Orlag does not have a set either for tier five yet. Let's go ahead and go to raid. Now we have unlocked Hyper Dimension. And this is Kaleido over here. And this is the setup that I was showing you over there in the expedition that you can also get. This is how the cosmetics look for the legendary drops. Let's go ahead and summon. Egad, you are here. Perfect. My latest invention. The Bubble Oscillator has ripped a hole into another dimension. I need you to get in there and close it before we are all <gasps> doomed. All right, Hyper Dimension. Again, normal gives you nothing. Hard, 200% item find and 50% capture rate. Heroic, 400% item find and 100% capture rate. Let's go ahead and check out the loot bonuses here. We are going to get curios as a drop which is used to make mythic set or mythic sets mythic accessories uh will log your schematic 
it's a good fam, but it's way too hard to make, and other fams, especially epic fams, believe it or not, can outshine Wallogder in a lot of things, especially in his main role. So this schematic is not that worth going for. Uh, we have one set here, which is the Ares Legacy set. 20% uh, chance for skills not to spend SP. Now it's a main hand and off hand. They look cool as a cosmetic, but they aren't that great. I highly recommend you just stick to using epics. So here is some of the gear you're going to be getting. It's all legendary. We have Walcom schematic. This is now actually a very, very good schematic, but we aren't really going for Orlag in this gameplay. We're trying to only do Nether until tier 13. Whether it's Orlag or Netherworld, try to pick one and try to only do that world boss. Because if you do, and you go to the loot here, like this one, for example, drops Demon Juice. Demon Juice is not something that can be dropped in Orlag. Orlag drops Hobbit Foot, or Hobbit Feet, technically. So, unless you're going to be making Orlag fams, uh, just only do Orlag. If not, and you want to do Netherworld fams, only do Netherworld. Trust me. I'm doing Netherworld because my other playthrough, I did a bunch of Orlag, and I never really made any of the Netherworld uh, characters familiars, but I know they're pretty good. Again, Drenith, very, very strong DPS fam. We also have Drazig, which is another solid one, but I want to try to go ahead and make a Mythic Familiar on a free-to-play account. That way you guys can see that it is possible. And once you get Drenith, he is a game changer. He is one of the top DPS in the game. Even in current tier, he is very strong. I, I'm going to try my very best in this playthrough to make a Drenith. So we are going to keep pushing this world boss all the way to tier 13. We might even be revisiting it in the future just for some grinding to try to finish this Drenith. So let's go ahead and leave. All right. Let's go into one last little thing, which is going to be one raid run. I'm going to go ahead and pause on these familiars. All right, we have three new familiars here. And as you noticed, as you noticed, we have three familiars here in general. The last raid, I believe only had two. I'm not entirely sure, but now we have a three familiar layout and they are all epics. This is Violace, closest, 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 and heals target. So this guy just hits the front like crazy. He also self-sustains with the drain here. Okay. Oivor. Closest drain from all enemies. So this is an attack all that he heals from. So he can attack all with this one. He has a lot of speed. It is his lowest stat though. So closest as well and target. Target will be his two SP. So no need to really freak out about the target since it's a two SP. Driffin. Now this guy is very fast and very strong. He is known as a glass cannon. Any familiars used are made with Driffin as a fusion familiar usually has this kind of setup which is a lot of strength and a lot of speed with low stam. They tend to be glass cannons so he has closest, closest three so that's pretty much almost attack all. He can attack half your team with his one SP skill. Pretty strong. Spread heal teammates so he heals all of his teammates and closest. So you're going to want your DPS, your main DPS at least, to be right here where Bubba's at in the fourth area. If you are gonna be using any uh, weaker players, not like strong carries like I have here, you will want to have your DPS fourth, a tank up front, a tank in second, and a tank in back, or bait in back. And then you can have your two DPS here. Go ahead, auto on through. I am Kaleido, the guardian of this dimension. No puny mortal has ever dared to step foot in my dimension before. Your power is truly impressive. Finally, a true challenge awaits me. Now Kaleido's pretty cool. He looks cool and he's used for a lot of very strong familiars. Um, unfortunately, in this free-to-play account, I don't think I will be going for them only because it is a lot of Kaleidos to make those 
familiars. And Kaleido is very, very hard to get on your team as it is as a free to play. Even as a pay to play, he's a little hard to get. It's very rare where he lets you bribe him. So let's go ahead and push on through. Awesome, so here's our loot recap. The good thing is we got some rares. We have two heads, which is unfortunate. I'm probably gonna do the health one because speed is just not what I go for on this right now. Let's go ahead and go to town. Now, just to get a nice TS jump, I'm gonna go ahead and level up this hood. I'm gonna max it out so I can get a lot more stats. Since I was having problems with the last flag, I know I'm going to be leveling up some gear. I'm gonna have to. So let's go ahead and equip that. And let's clear all the excess gear we have that we do not need. All right, got some epic material back. Awesome. All right, now that's pretty much gonna be the end of this. It's a pretty fast episode in my opinion compared to the last ones, only because it was so easy. Like I said, once you get Borland and Shramps, you get pretty set up. The beginning of the game, if you prepare properly like I've shown you in the first three episodes, you will be able to get through this like nothing. I'm currently level 75 just because I do some regen. Again, the little bit of stat points do help, don't get me wrong, but again, if you have that Borland and Tramps, the most you might have to do, different than me, is to get a, another uh, leveled up rare in order to pass tier four. That should be the difference between the levels I have and the levels you have. So if you are stuck and this setup right here, let's pretend this is a tier four. Let's say these tier fours aren't enough with the two epics, then just get a little more levels. Or if you have to, level up a third epic as a, as a replacement for uh, one of these rares. I don't recommend doing the epic one. I recommend just playing. Once you play, as long as you keep an eye on your energy, you should be able to keep refilling energy all the way up to, I believe, level 42 endlessly and just keep playing and playing and playing and playing. So the cool thing is you'll just be able to play a lot at the beginning of the game, especially because it's so easy to boost this up just by leveling up your character all right guys thank you so much for tuning into this episode i really do appreciate it i am so glad that y'all are here with me through this adventure it's pretty fun um if y'all need any help at all my discord is going to be in the comments i also have the official discord so other players can help you as well and i have a few other links down there like the tos link so you can go ahead and know exactly what the tos is since everyone wants you to put it in the comments for some reason and uh i also have um a link for the bit heroes wiki i recommend you all take a look at the bit heroes wiki if you all have any questions at all again thank you so much uh, i really do appreciate it this was world eater have a great one guys peace